Now, the news from the Voice of America. Baghdad begins to recover from deadly bombings. Pope to Brazil on Monday. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting live from the VOA News Center in Washington. People in some districts of the Iraqi capital Baghdad spent Sunday looking at the damage caused by at least seven bombs that exploded late Saturday. The car bombings hit mostly Shiite areas in and around the city, killing at least 46 people and wounding many more. The explosions happened as many residents were shopping or relaxing in cafes. After breaking the daily Ramadan fast, there was no immediate claim of responsibility for the bombings. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he strongly supports the upcoming peace negotiations with the Palestinians. Mr. Netanyahu told his cabinet on Sunday that the talks are of vital strategic interest for Israel. The talks were arranged by the United States. However, neither side appears ready to make any significant concessions. A Syrian activist group says government shelling killed at least 18 people in northern Syria Sunday, and 28 rebels died near Damascus battling government forces. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights also said a militia supporting Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has killed 13 members of the same family, including six children in the Mediterranean coastal village Beta. The activist group said the killings happened Saturday as rebels and troops fought in a nearby town. Pakistan says it will support peace efforts in Afghanistan using what it calls some influence and contacts it has with Taliban rebels. The Pakistani Prime Minister's new foreign policy advisor, Sartaj Aziz, was in the Afghan capital, Kabul, on Sunday. He denied allegations that Pakistan wants Afghanistan to break up or that it wants the Taliban to be part of the government after international forces leave the country. Ayaz Ghul reports. Pakistani diplomat Aziz, during his visit to Kabul, also denied Islamabad was trying to impose its own solution to end the Afghan war. There's no point in our discussing one system or another because it's not for us. It is for Afghan themselves to decide what system and what kind of uh, post-2014 arrangements they would like to have. Pakistan helped the Taliban to take power in Afghanistan before the U.S.-led invasion ended their five-year rule in 2001. Afghan leaders suspect the Pakistani spy agency remains in contact with the Taliban insurgency in a bid to influence the peace efforts and promote the Islamist movement. Obviously, we have some contacts with the Taliban because of the past, but we don't control them. So in future also, if to the extent we are requested, we can play the same role, but at the appropriate time and in consultation with the other interested parties. Ayaz Gul for VOA News, Islamabad. You are listening to the news from the Voice of America in Washington. Officials in Mali say five people abducted by gunmen in the northern part of the country have been set free. Among them were four election officials. They were kidnapped Saturday. Malian officials blamed the kidnapping on the ethnic Tuareg separatist group, and they arrested one of its leaders. The kidnappings happened a week before a planned presidential election that officials hope will de restore democracy, peace, and unity to the country. 27 people are campaigning for the presidency. The VOA's Ann Look reports. Mali is trying to emerge from a year and a half of unprecedented crisis. It started with another Tuareg rebellion, followed by a military coup, an Islamist takeover, and a French-led military intervention. Candidates are all pledging to fight corruption, build a stronger army, and heal long-standing communal tensions. The country's largest political party has backed relative unknown drama in Dembele. Malians must forgive each other today and shake hands for national reconciliation. Several of the top candidates, like Modibo Sidibe, 
and Ibrahim Boubacar Keita are former ministers and prime ministers. However, many of the 27 candidates are playing up their outsider status, something that appears to be resonating with voters. And look, VOA News, Dakar. Workers in Brazil are making final preparations for the planned arrival Monday afternoon of Pope Francis. He is traveling to Brazil to mark the start of the week-long World Youth Day celebration. This will be the Pope's first overseas trip since becoming head of the Roman Catholic Church in March. Brazil is the world's largest Roman Catholic country. That's the news at this hour from the Voice of America. You can find more on these and other stories from around the world, around the clock at voanews.com. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News, Washington.